Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome back to Innova Baltic Tour presented by Innova Champion Discs. This is uh, Pärnu Open on a beautiful Yuluma course and uh, we are beginning to watch the third and final round of this uh, Pärnu Open and here you have the leader after first two rounds, Roland Kour from Team 64 Baltic uh, with score minus 21. And secondly we have Matthias Villata representing Prodigy with rating 10-10 and minus 15 sitting on the second place here. Third place Rainer Spalodis from Team Discord also representing Latvia. PDJ rating 9-8-9 and after two rounds score minus 13. And Mauri Willman from Estonia representing Team 64 Baltics and with rating 1002, hunting those others down here today. One thing that I forgot to tell, my name is oh. Anthony Enten and also my name with is Marcus me. Dvignanino. Yes, as, you, as per usual. And here we go. This is um, the first hole. Um, this is uh, set up only for uh, Innova Baltic Tour competitions and uh, yeah 144 meters uphill let's see uh, who's gonna be um, putting the scores on PDJ who's gonna be doing it on uh, disc golf <laughs> metrics we don't know that absolutely and um, we we played two courses on on this event here so right now we're going to the yellow course and uh, which is the longer course we also have the red course, which is a bit shorter, but today you should see some longer shots, open and wooded, and downhill, uphill, everything should be covered. So this one, this is the the course you played uh, first day, and then red was second day. Yes. And then final round again on the yes. yellow one, which is should be a little bit more uh, difficult and uh, demanding. So let's see how the how the guys uh, play this this round. Yeah, and on the first hole, as we can see, it's it's uh, pretty straightforward. Although wind might uh, take its toll on you sometimes if it's if it's bigger. But I would say that on that exact day, it was pretty okay. It wasn't something terrible. It wasn't super calm. So you you had the wind playing a bit, but going like Mauri here with a overstable forehand, this was a pretty common shot. Yeah, and uh, you have OB on left side the the path and on the right side the fence. So yeah, it's uh, pretty much a, a narrow corridor, and seems like nobody's uh, is actually trying to even attack the basket. Yeah, 144 meters and slightly uphill. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, pretty pretty difficult. And regarding the statistics of the first hole, then... Uh, not a single... Uh, yeah, uh, wait, this is... This is the last round, not a single birdie on the last round. But we'll take a look if there were any on the first round. I would say that... Yeah, no I birdies no. on last round. And then first round, let me check it quickly. We have zero birdies. Yeah, so this tells it pretty much. And as we saw right now, um, Matthias's uh, approach pretty nicely on the five meters there. There also OB when you approach too long, so this really comes into play. I know it. <laughs> so yeah, bullseye from Absolutely. Roland. No pressure there. Uh, on the first hole, there were pretty big numbers taken, uh, even even on the on the third card and fourth card. Uh, I saw an eight. Only. Yeah, I guess there were even bigger numbers. So yeah, you might get carried away with going first OB, second maybe, leaving short, then followed up with a longer putt into the backside OB. You know. Yeah, that's, that's how this golf works. That is, that, that's <laughs> true. And uh, I've played this uh, whole couple of years ago, and yeah. uh, I remember seeing all kinds of uh, opening shots because when your name gets called out, even though like you're playing in the early early group or mm -hmm. uh, or uh, whatever still calling out your name and, and going on the tee pad and having that music and everybody watching so yeah it might be intimidating for absolutely. some guys absolutely and 
even with you, I guess that you know you're basically gonna reach the basket, so you're kind of maybe thinking about it, if yeah. you're feeling good or if you're not, and you know. A couple of years ago, the the situation was uh, usually that if you reach a basket on your uh, practice round, you're gonna go for it <laughs> during the <laughs> competition round. But nowadays, uh, for me, I've uh, learned my lessons. Yeah. So we move on to the second hole, which is uh, once again, uh, or not once again, I would say it's the first backhand hole. A pretty nice uh, opening tunnel shot, which then opens into a bigger gap and once again fades to the left side into this nice little hole here. So I guess like circle edge drives are fairly good. You might find yourself on right, on left side challenging the trees and something uh, even bigger than a three or four maybe. But we see Roland here showing the, I would say, exact line. Yeah, that's true. And that's that's like the 10 meters I was talking about, so... Even... A bit shorter. A little, little bit closer. Bit closer, yeah. yeah. You saw but the... Approximately. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. And uh, the good part of this uh, hole is that you don't have any OB long. You don't have yeah. any OB actually. So actually, the uh, is the path OB? Yeah, the path okay. long is OB, but I I don't know. Different, have you seen yeah, anybody yeah, come there? Um, I know one guy. <laughs> <laughs> I have okay. done it, but okay. yeah. that competition it wasn't OB, so yeah, uh, I was I was saved by that. But so, yeah, this is uh, this looks really good because of the the low mm -hmm. line and uh, and those couple of skips. So yeah. you might end up uh, closer to the basket. So. On this uh, on these fairways and holes, the the terrain is kind of you never know if you're gonna get the skip or not. It might be like uh, really sandy and then it kind of sticks. That sticks, yeah. But if it's not, then it can go pretty fast, pretty long. And that oh. was actually perfect. It landed in bullseye and stayed there, making a statement. Yeah. yeah. And one thing I want to mention: think about the average age of this car. Yeah, that's good. Roland <laughs> is 15, Paulo this I think should be around uh, 19? Uh, uh, something around um, as Matthias. 18, so, 19? Yeah, yeah. Matthias 18? Uh, no, 17. Uh, Matthias should be two months older than Reiners, he told me, if I'm not mistaken. So two guys 17, yeah. one guy 15 and Mauri is around 20, um, 20 plus? Something. Something, yeah. 20 so. Ish. Because he played juniors a couple years ago. I yeah, think. should be, should be. Yeah. So, yeah, he's the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> he's responsible for the younger for, ones. For the yeah. younger ones. <laughs> Whichever yeah. happens to anybody, he needs to take care of everything. So it's crazy to think yeah. that this is, this is the future. Yeah, absolutely. Having the youngest guy leading the whole competition, mm -hmm. crushing the courses day in, day out, like, this is crazy. Yeah. Hole three, par three, 99 meters, um, fairly straight shot, um, low uh, up and down or down and up. Mm -hmm. So basically, yeah, you have to end up uh, uh, up on this sandy part. So here you can see, yeah, there's a little bit of a like a small hole just before the climb to the basket. Yeah, this should be like a. I would say not musket birdie, almost a musket birdie, but definitely a look for birdie oh, yeah. should be available for, for all those guys. There's also... But, oh, oh, oh. Talking about uh, having a look, then as you can see, the asphalt is OB everywhere. So might just found it here. A bit... Uh, Too aggressive. A bit high the, and not the high turn and, he, uh, he was the, looking for, but... And this turns a little bit too much, so... Okay, talking about musket bird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's this golf once again, you... That is true. You think you have to take them all, but then you take none. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if Latvian heroes can make it up. This looks a bit better if it comes back. Yeah. Clipping those branches and there it is. Yeah, five, six meters. Yeah, true. Shouldn't be a problem. And been high, so you don't have mm -hmm. to go uphill or downhill yeah. cut so yeah, and Roland yeah. basically no run up just doing his yeah, little hop, has, hop steps and <laughs> yeah absolutely ah, he well. just needs one square meter <laughs> <laughs> just shoots it and parks it nicely so we have three looks for birdies let's see if Maury can sink this longer one a bit too wide not this time and uh, 
Titans definitely looking to make this one as Reiners will be taking a birdie most likely. Uh, yeah, there it is. Nice par laser. saved. Both Roland and Matthias have like a, and also Maury, like have super fast, super straight line putting style. So, I mean, yeah, and if they should miss a putt, they won't miss a putt. <laughs> but if they should, it should go like yeah. 100 meters past the basket. That is true. I have seen a round from Roland where he absolutely crushed a course minus 18 uh, yeah. during a competition, Don't and his me. putting was just unreal. So we have hole four, uh, par three and 107 meters. I would say it's it's a forehand hole. You have to kind of throw one up there, a bit of a flippy one, and then get through those last trees and fade down into that hole once again. It's doable with backhand, but it's really technical. I would say maybe you can you can tell more about the backhand side. But uh, yeah, I used to play backhand because. Uh Years ago, my forehand wasn't actually good enough, but now we can see if Reiner yeah. has the line. Because it is really technical, again. And a bit you, lucky, I would say, also. Th that is true, yeah. Because yeah. uh, actually, you cannot see from here, but there's like a small hump just before the, the basket, and then it goes into a hole. So, yeah, it is a tricky one. And this one looks like it's, it was a little bit too straight, but he might have a backdoor yeah. look. Yeah, that's... Yeah. I mean, I, I guess that's okay spot for a backhand. Oh, yeah. To yeah. have a look uh, from the outside, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, that is true. It, like, with a backhand seen... Yeah. Okay, yeah. That might be a good kick. There, there should be some kind of... There is a corridor on yeah. the right side. If you actually miss too far right, you have a look for the basket because there's like a like a... Mm -hmm. path into the hole and I, uh, like I just leaks it a bit too left or I think it was a, a bit too understable and it flipped mm -hmm. it over a bit too much but Paris is a go-to and, and Birdie is most likely out of the game right now this looks best of these Ooh. 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 ace run talking about See, difficult hole close to me yeah. <laughs> that was close I mean, yeah, once you get to the bottom of the hole, you're most likely really close to the basket, as, as we saw Maori, but... You uh, yeah, usually you don't see opening drives that go, uh, like, far, yeah. you go behind yeah. the basket. Usually you, you stay, like, um, short. Uh -huh. And, uh, yeah, now we see three guys coming from, basically, top down, and, oh, Mike just giving him a good <laughs> run. Well, Why these, not? these young guys are just, I don't know. They need to get older. <laughs> Fast. <laughs> and some. Nah. That might be bad for us also. Oh! oh. That's yeah. a bonus birdie. Why not? Why not? Ah, he doesn't get, care. <laughs> no emotions. I mean, he has work to do, so he can't like. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, Reiner's now two out of three. Yeah. And Maori gets his. Uh, sorry. That was uh, three out of four already. Yeah, yeah. Rhinus is on, on fire. He's moving. Maori, two out of four. Which is okay. Yeah, of course. And Roland uh, taking it slower than I would expect. Yeah, having first two rounds minus 21, you might expect a little bit more of fireworks. But now hole five, par 311 meters, and this is. For me, usually, uh, one of the trickiest holes, but uh, basically, the forehand line, it, it, you need to throw it pretty straight and have like a slight fade mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the end, because yeah. the turn towards the basket is not that sharp. It almost, if you go to the basket and look back, it's almost like a straight shot. This seems a really nice shot. And it, oh is, my. it is, you don't see many like uh, five meter birdie putts on, on this hole. With a side I, I arm, say you. like the height control. Yeah. But I think actually that like a controlled backhand 
fits pretty nicely. Yeah, of course. Yeah, hole. yeah, that is true. Because and again, for, forehand tends to like a fade, fade too much. Too much yeah. yeah, that's why I told her. Yeah, if you go to the basket or like from the 10 meter line, if mm -hmm. you look back to the tee pad, mm -hmm. it almost feels like it's a straight shot. Yeah, with a little bit of like yeah. a backhand turn. Mm -hmm. But as you're throwing up, hill, the nose gets up. You yeah. tend to get more fade than you're looking that, for. That's true. But yeah, also Roland uh, leaving it uh, place to run or uh, opportunity for birdie. On the first round, I was playing with with Roland and he sank a 25 meter putt from no, I don't know from where. That's <laughs> that's why he's on minus 21. Yeah. Oh, he wore left uh, two rounds. This, if it gets yeah uh, too wide. Okay. That's pretty common place to be, I guess. I would say mm -hmm. if you get up there, you, you, there's also a bit of wind uh, on this hole, usually coming down towards the tee pad. So you need to deal with that one also. And um, these young guys are running everything from this again. From this angle, you don't actually see that Matias was putting mm -hmm. a little bit downhill. Yeah. So if you actually miss the basket and uh, has too much air. It's gonna travel far down, and you have yeah. like an uphill putt to save uh, a, par, a par or a bogey. Yeah. Whatever your uh, your uh, shot count is at that moment. But now we have another uh, birdie opportunity. Should be a laser beam. Oh ho! And that actually was the mistake he was doing during World Championships when he didn't Worlds? have Worlds. Worlds yeah. Uh, you was it? No, nah, sorry, yeah, no, with the team words. Ah, okay, okay. So okay. the final round, he was playing good, but he was missing to the left. So mm -hmm. if Mauri misses, usually he misses to the left. Okay. Hopefully, let, let's hope that he's not actually starting a trend like yeah. like that time. But, yeah. And uh, Reiner's taking the easy birdie here and the uh, low one also. Yeah, that's taking true. Taking it back from the Estonians. And... Uh, yeah, he's sneaking past Matthias and uh, also Maori and uh, definitely looking to catch up Roland if yeah, possible. It is possible, of course. So hole six is par three and 102 meters. It's uh, once again quite a straight shot, but with a little bit fade. And as the basket is tucked uh, on this pedestal, pedestal, it, it makes it uh, quite tricky, I would say. Because uh, once again, putting from 10 meters, which is like a regular thing to to for me to be for a bird to look, it's quite uh, taunting actually. Yeah. Because uh, from <laughs> one side, if you again, if you miss, you might go down mm -hmm. like where the where the slope is going slope down is, a bit. Yeah. And usually, there's some wind coming from the left side, so it's it's like you look at the hole and it seems quite easy, but you play it and it plays much harder. I would yeah. Say. And the common mistake is actually leaving a little bit short, which isn't bad because then actually you're putting on like if you miss you, you're putting back from the same level. If you're putting from the right side, mm -hmm. looking from the tee pad, mm -hmm. then you're actually putting like a death putt. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, either any side, the height it, like it's on, almost a meter higher, even more. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's. Not an easy one, you actually want to park it pretty close. Roland also turns it a bit over and that's the place it's really yeah. like daunting to, to really attack the basket. You have to really feel your putt and uh, if there's some wind coming it's like, uh, yeah, I just don't know. Put it under the basket <laughs> and s yeah. settle with the par. Oh, it might just coming from nope. out? And as we see there's there shouldn't be anybody in the, inside the circle. And we're we're looking at the, yeah. the lead card right now. Yeah, so that is true. That really tells the story, I, I would say. Mm -hmm. Mike is already putting it under the basket, basically, or like next to the pedestal. So yeah. settling with a par, Mark Reiners is going for it. And there you have it. Yeah. And now he has even more elevation to deal with. Obstructed path seems like maybe the two trees, and also Roland doesn't want anything to do with that. Oh, I mean, he has a nice cushion, so it's mm -hmm. a fair, fairly good uh, say decision from his side. And now we're leaving that also. That is actually the best side to run it, if you don't have like a uh -huh. monster headwind, because uh -huh. yeah, giving it like a soft run 
and if you miss it, leave it next to the basket. But mm. here you see Reiners went for the birdie and yeah. has to settle with the bogey. So, but I mean, Reiners had like four birdies out of five, he must have felt good. So, he yeah. thought, I guess, that what do I have to hold on here? I'm going to, I need to catch the Roland. I think he's, yeah. he's definitely trying to get the maximum out here, I guess. So, it's a, it's a, I don't know. You sometimes have to take those decisions and, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And we move on to hole number seven, par four, 199 meters. So here on the right side, you can see mandatory tree. So we're throwing from top downhill, turning right and then a little bit more right <laughs> and then we're going uphill right <laughs> so yeah it's like a horseshoe uh, hole you have both sidearm and backhand uh, turnover shots here and some crazy guys even go like high above the treetops and just hope for the best for the disc yeah. to land clo somewhere close to, I don't know, 20, 30 meters from the basket. I have actually seen those mm. shots. So, okay. so yeah, but that's more uh, with a really good wind and a little bit of luck. You can actually make it and with somewhere a, where the ba uh, yeah, bag is. With a massive backhand. Yeah, true. But the, but the actual play is to play down on the, mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. crossing road. Do you have a look for birdie? You basically need to get down to the road. You don't even need to really like steal too much of the corner yeah. you just need to have a okay place for your second shot mm -hmm. on this uh, sunny place here right i would say it's totally enough to be that's true but that's the mental of the players to go as as far as yeah. possible <laughs> and to have as short as possible and we see might just go in the high line uh, uh, now, yeah, now we're hoping <laughs> to see something anything Okay. Uh, looks to be ah. somewhere close okay. to cameraman. So that I think it cl clicked some trees and, and fell down because it's not that far as uh, like a shot that would have uh, how you say um, been as he wanted to be. Yeah. So it's it's not definitely something he was looking for. Yeah, and Reiner's uh, maybe a little bit too, a little bit straight, but actually on the left side of that pass, so yeah. he actually has pretty good view. Other than like here, you can see Roland has to go with a, a turnover again because he was on the right side of that path, and now he got some clips, some branches. Yeah, you can see the ten meter like these uh, markings red ones, red tubes on the ground, so he's, I think, somewhere around 15 meters from the basket. This seems to be really nice. Ooh, tracking yeah. to the basket, so Mauri now looking for another birdie. After that, pretty good sidearm, and yeah, Reiners has some trees to deal with, looking for, with a flex sidearm, and that is yep. a nice one. Yeah, so as we can see, he actually got pretty good distance from the mm -hmm. corner, mm -hmm. and now yeah, might just. But if if yes, if Reiners would have been like maybe two or three meters more inside the woods, then it, it, been it might have been like a zero chance yeah. to, to reach the. So it really depends which kind of uh, footing and and uh, and look you have. Yeah, so now we saw that two guys that were more on the left side and like a longer, uh, with a longer opening drive to the left side of the path, yeah. got a bit better uh, shots and uh, are actually putting for birdie. And Mike is here trying to, Ooh. trying to get the birdie, but close, but close. not close enough. <laughs> Roland definitely looking to get something going here. I mean, he has pars, but he's looking for where he's okay here. Just yeah, he's laying it up, yeah. Just yeah, because you're also a bit of slopey around the basket, so you might find yourself uh, rolling away. And no need to play the bogey here. Yeah, and uh, Mori with his third birdie. This yeah, Mori's going like stable, just taking some birdies, missing some. It's not like 
bad, yeah. it's not super good, but I think he's okay. Yeah, and through seven holes, we only have one bogey. Yeah, yeah, that's so the thing I was looking for. They are playing well. pretty, pretty nice round, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, and Mike does also has has the only OB, but uh, was yeah. able to save the par. So guys so, are playing good. Yeah, hole eight uh, brings us uh, backhand hole. You can also solve it with forehand, but it's it's tricky both ways. I would say to get really inside the circle. You need to have really clean line with the backhand and uh, maybe even oh, a little bit without, skip. Yeah, skip, overstable. Yeah, but more there's likely. sand everywhere be before the basket, so getting skip is quite like questionable. So you never know where the disc ends if if you if you even make the right shot. Yeah, and the and the opening, like let's say the first what is it 70 meters i think mm -hmm. has to be pretty straight mm -hmm. and then you can actually turn towards the basket because if you go left or like uh, fade in too mm -hmm. early as you can see mm -hmm. you still yeah Rhinus has a look but it was lucky it was lucky yeah if you cut the corner if you try to steal you might get really really unlucky and yeah. be, be like in a jail now this seems like the the real life yeah oh, pretty much perfect yeah, yeah. Bullseye. Can't even make it better. Almost bullseye, so yeah. So the, the, the great shot would be full time hyzer, I would say. Power hyzer. Power hyzer, yeah. With a skippy disc like a fast fairway hybrid or, or driver. Uh, might there's a little bit yeah. too much power in those arms or in the right. Combined. It combines and the body and everything. Yeah. Yeah, he has grown to a, a pretty like a tall guy. So yeah. also the length of his arms gives him a pretty good reach, and, and the drives are pretty. Mm, oh, mm, mm, yeah, mm, mm. Reiner, just stop me. Yeah, <laughs> and no emotions. Like this guy is on a mission. He wants to, he wants to get to Roland's uh, tail. Yeah, couple couple uh, strokes behind and start actually like. Giving him some pressure, but to be honest, these young guys—I don't even know if they, they know what pressure is. <laughs> <laughs> they just enjoy the game. And, yeah, and they don't need to worry about the life at all. They're just playing and relaxing, and you know, sunny outside. Yeah, that's what I want to say. I'm in Estonia. Yeah, <laughs> just Reiner's having a good time and <laughs> playing with the boys. Yeah, but Maury missed his. Uh, but once again, definitely, I think he didn't like that. Or, I mean, it was a clean miss, uh, so yeah, nothing no. too, too, too good there. And Roland taking an easy birdie. Second birdie, going slowly, but uh, still, guys not catching up right now. Yeah, not enough. Yeah, so hole nine brings us par three and 109 meters. Once again, quite straight shot. Both doable with backhand, with forehand, but I would say... More with forehand. Yes, because uh, the fade is on the right side and we have also quite big slope uphill, so it backhand tends to fade to the right side. Easily. Yeah, and downhill and, yeah. Uh, and it actually you have a little bit more room on the left side for that uh, forehand yeah. uh, flex shot. So. And if you, I mean... If, you, if you're even short, like 30 meters on the right, on the left, you usually have a look for the birdie. So it's it's not the hole where you're looking to, I mean, get anything more than a par, I would say. If you don't make like a pretty big Silly mistake, uh, yeah. putting mistake down and going long maybe or something, getting a roll away. So overall, I would say it's a par or birdie. For, for most of the field. This looks good. Oh, this oh looks God. good. And now, really nice drive, but he has nine meter downhill, downhill putts. Putt. So, so yeah, as he's not maybe feeling most comfortable with the putting, with his style also. Yeah, the laser beam. It might get into your head. And and if this misses, this seems to be really good. Yeah. Oh my. That's what you want. That's what you want. So we actually have. Okay, so this is a little bit longer one. I was almost almost starting to think about uh, first star frame, but yeah, that's where that hope has mm -hmm, ended. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now it's time to make it or break it. And he makes it. Yeah. Under the band. 
nice and easy and you can see that really uh, <laughs> big exhale and no, oh Roland can't like get it going so don't want to jinx anything but it looks like he's maybe a little bit feeling the the breath of Reiner's mm. <laughs> in his neck maybe maybe Come but on. I mean still there's five strokes uh, oh, yeah. between them and nine holes to go but you know this golf anything can happen here anything can happen yeah that was the front nine uh, of uh, Pernu Open I hope you guys enjoyed this round we still have nine holes to go five strokes between first and second place and also the other guys are chasing this young guy Roland Kaur so don't go too far get something drink something to eat and see you on back nine see ya